Greetings and welcome to Kalazari System Survival Episode 36. Now, oh, I just noticed the energy levels low. Let me just jump into the chair here and charge ourselves up. Anyway, yes, welcome back to Episode 36. Um, we left off um, last episode. I was just working on our um, asteroid base here. Um, which I will continue to work on. Oh, looks like I've got... What have I got in my inventory? Looks like I'm... Yes, I'm ton of ton of steel plates. So, I can continue building with steel plate. Excellent. Um, now, okay, that's what we want. Here we go. Our helmet is down. Alright, now I've locked in the uh, oxygen generation and uh, yeah, reactor room. Only a single reactor there. I've also blocked in um, a server room, which is just designed. Well, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. It's designed for six programmable blocks, which I think should be well and truly sufficient for my needs. Now we're going to need a little bit extra room so that we can put a, um, a vent in here. So we've got timer blocks, programmable blocks, vent. Vent will go there, so it will come to the full height. So that I've actually put a roof on it and make it atmospheric. Well, airtight is, is the correct term, isn't it? Okay, so that should do. Now... We will be using this side port here of the reactor to be able to tie into. Yes, there's a meteor storm. Uh, number eight, we want. Oh, I've got no. Let me just jump up here. I want to see where these meteors are coming from. I think they're coming from behind the asteroid, actually. We need a little bit of those and nothing, if nothing else. Just we're going to stick one of these down here. And... Just need to figure out where we're going to put this. It's going to be hard tight there. Okay, to that one there. Yep, that one there. So we'll stick one of them there. And an angle there, just like that. Oop, okay, run into the wall. That way I can stick a vent on this. And that's what we want, a vent. Where is it? Hello, venti, there you are, number six. And we'll stick you there. That way this can get charged up and filled with oxygen as is required. Don't need any other uh, conveyor systems into this particular room. It's just for programmable blocks and timers. And if you're wondering how we're going to structure it, it's pretty straightforward. It'll have timer blocks on this bottom layer here. So three on that side there, three on this side here. Above that we'll stick the programmable blocks, which will actually be just underneath that vent there. Three there, and three there. Uh, that should give me well and truly enough that we have an empty space, empty one block space between that and the ceiling. Which is going to go there. Just like over here, the ceiling goes there as well. And it's going to be the same for oxygen gener generation as well, so one there. Now this particular space will be extended a lot bigger than what we've got here this is probably going to be the beginning of our refinery and assembler space so I'm not going to work on that at the moment um, because it's going to take a little bit more planning and a bit more thought but we will just start blocking all this stuff in I think 
um, so that uh, it's more complete. I will get around to actually adding the ceiling, but I'm still deciding on the level of the ceiling. I don't know whether I want them all on the same level or whether I want to tier them. At the moment, I know they are the same level. And just that's just the nature of what I'm building. I, I can't actually put uh, a block any lower than that because that's what I require for my my vent. So that whole tier, that whole level there, that one around there, is going to end up empty because that's where I need to put the vent on this side here. Yeah, but that's neither here nor there. It's not a big, big decision that one. Uh, we might end up making use of the top of this structure as our landing platform. If you recall, I was discussing uh, uh, that I'd like to create a landing platform big enough for our gecko rather than leaving it floating out in space. I would actually like to dock it to the actual base. Um, eventually I'd actually like to add oh, let me just get out of there. Uh, eventually I'd like to add more than just the one landing gear to it. I'd actually like to make it a three landing gear structure. Uh, only because that lends itself I think rather well to three landing gear. Um, even if yeah we could stick a landing gear on the bottom of this engine here and same on the other side or add a block and then a block at the landing gear I think yes I think no no it would just go straight on the bottom that would work really quite well actually and that way we could make it a three landing gear or tri gear um, but that's moving forward it's not important at the moment it works well with just the one landing gear That's our server room all blocked in. We'll just put the token block and we'll just block in as well. It is just a token so we can see where that that's going to be a ceiling. But that works. Now as for conveying everything else up, it will actually probably come off the top of this junction here and go through there in fact I, that, I believe that is actually where it will go through which is just underneath the ceiling level so um, assuming that the ceiling level doesn't change it will come through somewhere there on that line somewhere along there now we can actually extend this way and I'm thinking thinking I might make a similar room come out this way we're looking at two four five yeah, stalling come on thank you now that I think gives us three I don't know that gives us six but one is short we want that seven Okay, so that's going to be an assembly room with refineries and storage all back in here. I think that should work quite nicely. That way, I think that's big enough. We should be able to put probably six assemblers in there, I think. Just at a guesstimate. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, that will work nice. So it's going to be a seven by. Well, if we work to the same line that we've already got there, I think it's a seven by seven. But I haven't counted it. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we do that, that's actually a seven by five. Yes, actually that will work quite nicely. That will work very nicely. It gives us then even more room for our refineries and uh, furnaces. 
and storage can come off here as well so since our storage container is running 3 by 3 by 3 and as long as we've got a 5 by 5 or multiples of 5 5 by 5 by 5 or 5 by 15 by 5 um, well, 5 by 14 actually it will work nicely, we've got a 7 by so that will give us actually two space either side we can show that by doing this we'll probably take some of this out but there we go, we can actually put in a cargo container for example there and ok, it looks like there's three on the side but there's not actually, that's actually a wall So that's a two space there, two space there. If we really, really wanted to, we can make it a two space here as well. Just shuffle everything further back. We've got the room to. Uh, as an example, um, as for assemblers, there are one by two. But if you add expansions and upgrades to it, it actually makes it a three by three by two. Uh, it depends on how I want to structure that. Let me just knock out some of this. I just don't need that near now. Just knock that out. We don't really need it. I'll wing it as we go. Okay, I'm going to have to do some clearing. I was hoping I actually had enough room to not have to do this, but... Kind of do, but kind of don't. It's right on the edge, look at that. I'm not sure how far back I'm coming here, so let's take it right the way back to the wall. Obviously sloping down, look at that. Okay, well that's uh, close. That's better. Yeah, that's definitely better, but now we need to actually clean up the rest of this face. Hmm. Fabulous, eh? I have to admit, I'm glad they included that functionality into the drill. That you can mine things and just obliterate it as opposed to actually mining any usable resource um, I mean it's the closest you'll get to be able to using voxel tools in a survival game uh, voxel tools are really quite nice in a, in a creative environment especially when it comes to terraforming I suppose is the right word for it forming the terrain that's what terraforming means isn't it Really? Formation of terror? Formation of earth? I don't know, I'm just working on the basic word itself. I know it's used to, you know, to mean uh, making an atmosphere, uh, a planet or atmosphere breathable, but terraform is, you know, changing terrain. forming terrain is probably based on its word morphology and if you're wondering I'm totally bullshitting I really don't know I'm just 
rambling. Alright, well it's looking pretty good. Maybe we've got enough, let's have a look. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, we've got it structured for 11. That's really not going to work. If we go 10, like that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 between walls. Nice odd number. sure how high I want to go yet here either. It's kind of close. I mean it's well and truly higher than the previous building, the rest of the building, so I don't think we have the desire, or will have the need to go much higher than that. Just want to take these peaks off. Like that. And we've got some peaks here as well. Kind of thinking that's going to be enough. We're out of energy, well nearly. Let's just scoot on over back out of Gecko. Actually, let's just... Make use of this. There we go. And tonight's drink of choice is an old favourite. It's Captain Morgan's Spiced Rum. So if I do silly things, then you now know why. I only mention it because I literally just finished my current drink. But I'm going to be good. I will wait until I finish streaming. Well, before I actually go and pour myself another of this fantastic spiced rum. I actually prefer it over and just standard rum. Standard rum I find is just a little bit too sweet. Uh, the spiced rum, however, just gets that little bit of extra, I don't know, savouriness, I guess you could say, which makes it a far more palatable drink. Uh, I also tend to drink my alcohols neat. I don't mix them with anything. I don't dilute them with ice. I don't have it on the rocks. If I want it cold, I'll stick the whole bottle in the fridge. Uh, just for those who are curious, if you're not curious, please disregard everything I've been saying. some space over here. Darn it, I was hoping we could avoid having to do that. I 
Oh, these things happen. Okay, seven kilometers away. Why is that seven kilometers away? It's a little bit too close. I don't know. 6.832. Ooh, it's getting closer. What is it? A mining hauler. Okay, it's not as big a threat as it could be. My Gatlings are not set up to defend against that sort of stuff, so they're only set up to defend against meteors. So I just kind of hope it doesn't get too close. The base here, however, will have uh, will have protection against meteors and against pirates. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of pirate activity around... Ooh, 6.6, .6. it's getting darn close. What's going on? I really wish I could zoom in with a standard camera. But it does seem to be coming directly at us. Well, just to be on the safe side, I think we shall reconfigure. Just recharge. I think we'll reconfigure our Gatlings here fire on that and that as well just to be on the safe side and we'll turn that on just in case it gets too close it's 6.2 it's getting closer so yeah just in case it gets too close that should help eliminate oh, eliminate the problem the threat I hope So I'm to keep it just keeping an eye on that uh, mining hall. I don't really want it to get too close. So if I can avoid it, I will avoid hostility. Although that said, in this particular scenario, there is going to be plenty of opportunities where I'm not going to be avoiding hostilities. The goal is to eliminate the hostile threat of pirates on certain pla on the planets especially near certain bases, which, well, we've got no indication of yet, but I do know, because I built the scenario, I do know we'll get indication of those when we get within, oh, I don't know, 50 kilometres, and we're within um, beacon range, pretty much. We'll start seeing some requests for help and stuff, but hey, that's just a little bit of a spoiler. I'm not going to give too much more away, I don't think. Five point nine, five point uh, five seven. It's getting awfully close. I will say that. Five point four. It is actually getting awfully close. I can see this sort of thing, it's yellow in colour by the looks of it. Well, if it gets too close, the Gatlings will fire up. Hopefully, they'll be enough to eliminate it. It's a mining, mining haul or so. 
Hopefully it's not overly defended. Less than 5k, look at that. It is getting awfully close. It's probably the closest one we've had so far. Four point eight. Wow, that's quite a quite a size vessel, look at that. Up the very top left hand corner there. Four seven nine. Looks like it's getting close to us as close as it's gonna get. Four seven seven, okay. No, maybe not. That looks Pretty darn big actually, whatever that is. It's four kilometers away and it looks quite substantial in size. Yeah, I know we get distortion at the end of the screen, which is why I'm utilizing it. Almost looks like the banana, the banana boat. Uh, and it looks like it's turning towards me too. Interesting, very interesting. I mean, I think I've got those go Have I got them set at 800 metres? <coughs> I have, so I've got them at maximum distance. Don't think it's going to get all that much closer, but it seems to be getting awfully close, at least a lot closer than we've had any of those spawns come in before, or encounters I think you'd call them, come in before. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's a good thing. I think it's great. Oh, okay. That's better. As you can see, this base is going to be rather large in footprint, so ra rather large sort of base. I want it to be a, a primary base and a launch off point. Well, okay, 4.6 kilometers and it just vanished. That's interesting. What did it do? Engage a jump drive or something. So I didn't know that they had she had jump drives. Maybe I'm wrong. Which would not be the first time. the rock pretty nicely there, that's pretty good. I'm just blocking out at the moment. Oh, I've just realised that I've just screwed up. Just 
get rid of that top layer there. Yeah, I did the same over here too, so we'll have to get rid of this layer here. don't like having unstructured blocks underneath walls for example if I had left it the way it was I would have been able to build up the walls I would have been able to build up the floor but the join point directly underneath the wall would have still been just structural I don't like that it's just a personal pet peeve here we go usually do this first I build up the arm um, blocks underneath where the wall is I actually just got myself distracted and forgot all about it like that so now we can just add that all back in and then we'll weld these ones ones that are going to be under the wall again and that way as I build the wall up on top of it I don't need to worry about these corner wall support pieces I know they're actually fully formed blocks not just structural and I believe I'm out of steel plating yes so let's just jump in here and I've got the certainly got this the iron for it so we'll just get it to build another couple of thousand because we also need to build up all of those ones there all these ones all through here so basically anything is going to have a wall on it which will also be these ones here I believe and they'll leave us this big open area here which I think is going to be I think there's going to be refineries and storage this room with the room around the corner is going to be assemblers well when I say refineries I also include arc furnaces in that category so this will be arc furnaces refineries and probably cargo storage around the corner will be assemblers we've already mapped out where we're going to put our oxygen generation and reactor and server room so that gives us a pretty all-encompassing it will also give us also give us a very large footprint area up on top here which I think should be well and truly big enough for gecko there if we come up here that's a rather large footprint and if we compare it to get oh yes yes gecko should be able to come in here and should be able to land about there and will still be all fully encased and I'll probably will end up extending this platform here further right the way along might even extend it a bit further out and that way we can put small ships and probably possibly connectors out the front here Gecko can land up on top there yes I think that will work quite nicely actually we do need probably a CNC command and control section that might even go in where this void is here rather than extending the platform maybe turn that into another room from assembly come into a CNC room here which will have probably have things like LCDs displaying statuses and uh, as well as uh, flight control or flight chairs and command chairs um, I don't actually make use of drones or remote blocks very much because of their limited distance and usage like five kilometers is pathetic yeah just about all of the resources that I need to access here are more than five kilometers away I mean magnesium's 18 kilometers away plutonium uh, platinum I should say 18 kilometers away um, what else have we got here we've got Silicon at 10, we've got gold at 12, um, nickel at 15. See, so using a command chair and a remote block on a small on a small ship, not gonna work. 
really is not going to work. Five kilometers is, is nothing when it comes to stellar distances and space distances. Now, Gecko is another story. Being a large grid ship, it gives me a 50 kilometer range. So if I build a large grid mining vessel, which if you recall I was discussing the possibility of doing last episode, if I do build a large grid vessel, I can potentially make it remote controlled and with a 50 kilometer range, I could stay here safely at base and send it off to do mining. And actually, I th I'm actually liking that idea, to be perfectly honest. So I think I might build a... I'm not going to build a very big one. It'll probably be maybe a 3x3 three three drill head. Or maybe a 3x4. Probably large enough to maybe contain one refinery. And one large cargo container. And one large tractor. So it, again, like Gecko, it'll be built on a small grid principle. Uh, small grid concept and design basically how it's build a small grid ship but it just build it in the large grid um, I think that should work quite nicely and it'll give me something I can remote control as opposed to having to fly out manually so we'll, we'll think about that I'll put some more thought into that I'm still a little undecided but it certainly contains a lot of potential. Now, I think we should have built our steel plates by now. And yes, we have. Excellent. I haven't got comments. But I'm monologuing not to any potential visitors I have right at the moment, but to monologuing to any potential visitors that will come and watch this video later. That's why I'm archiving them all off to YouTube, so they will be forever available to people. Um, unfortunately, Twitch just stores things for. What did I establish? I think for 14 days at most before it takes them out. So, whoop. so it's nice that Twitch gives me the option to build what they call collections. But unfortunately, those collections become very meaningless when the videos start getting deleted after 14 days. So all my videos are exported or archived off to YouTube playlists, which links to the playlist can be found underneath these, the, the actual main stream here um, and that way all my streams are available for archival purposes and for, for any person who wants to catch up or see what I've done so far they can go back and watch the entire stream from the beginning actually a couple of streams. There's one stream I actually haven't listed in the links below this video um, and that is my Caladan system, uh, sorry, Caladan shipyards. Crumbs, I forgot my own name for it. Um, yeah, you'll notice there's links for the Calazari system survival, there's links for the beginner's guide that I did uh, a few weeks back, or finished a few weeks back actually. Um, but I do periodically just do a random, I suppose you could call it random, a random insight into my builds and experimentations and progress, which are titled Kalazari Shipyards, sorry, Kaladin Shipyards, oh jeez, um, and I do have a collection for that here on Twitch, and I do actually export it off to YouTube as well, so if you do end up bouncing over to YouTube to check out some of my previous streams. By all means, have a look at the playlists there. I do have the Caladan Shipyards um, listed there as well. And they're just an insight into various prototypes and uh, experiments and different builds and just stuff like that. It's, it's more just a, 
miscellaneous sort of stuff. It's unstructured, and I don't do it every night. Uh, it's, it's definitely is just a once in a blue moon sort of thing. I throw do an additional stream for about half an hour or so, just to highlight you know, current builds, current thoughts, current ideas, uh, stuff like that. Alright, now that we've got the actual connectors done, we can finish blocking this back in properly. blocking something in with light armor doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Um, these armor blocks will get removed and added as is required. This is just to outline basically the current idea and current thought process and then we'll get modified as I refine it and decide where things are going and um, figure out where I'm how I'm going to actually convey it up and things like that so don't be concerned about the fact that I'm not leaving door spaces and all that sort of stuff I haven't even decided where I'm putting doors yet so uh, I'll just come on, roughly block it in with the skeleton and then from there I'll start planning and laying out actual positions for items, objects, doors, access, yeah, all that sort of jazz. Okay, so this meets up to the level of the ceiling of every, uh, all the other rooms at this stage. And as I said just before, it might be a good idea to actually make that a full level structure because that then gives me all this total area as a landing pad which I think could be quite nice as you can see it's pretty big it's going to take a little while to actually fill that in but it should give me a really nice landing pad for gecko if nothing else or very similar type large grid ships like the mining ship that I was just discussing the possibility of just before still 500 so that will take very short order to get rid of that, it won't take very long. Did that just do what I thought it did? It did too. See, this is exactly what I was talking about before. Our corner is not done, and I've actually blocked this all in. Now, it's not a big drama, like for the corner over there, it's not a big drama. I can access that from the outside. But in this case, it is a drama, because it's hidden and embedded into the asteroid. I can't actually access it properly from the outside. <coughs> so we have to do that. And 
to all the corners where things meet at 90 degrees to another you have to be mindful of the fact that you need to weld them up oh I should have told this to actually do some more steel shouldn't I oh, we'll do 3000 this time yeah you have to be mindful of the 90 degree corners like here fortunately in this case I can access it from the outside so it's not a big drama um, but as you saw that one over there can't access from the outside so I needed to weld that up before I could actually block out or put in anything else here this one over here is exactly the same because it's embedded in the rock face so and the, the bottoms as well around the floor level here that'll do for now That's what I thought. I knew it was going to be close. And so yeah, we can just come back in here and just do this one up from the outside. We might as well do this whole corner piece so we don't have to worry about it again later. Just like that. So I've got to decide where we're going to put our gravity generator. I'm thinking I might stick it actually underneath the base, but invert it. So it'll be upside down underneath the base, but if I then invert the actual gravity field, uh, it'll give us the, the same effect. Um, I can access that through here somewhere. Yeah, just through here, I think. If we just cut down through here. We've got this space underneath the base here. So I'm thinking of maybe sticking a gravity generator just up under here. Don't think I've got one actually, have I? No, well let's just grab one. So sticking it up under here like this is all good. Okay, so we can just tuck ourselves back out of here. Um but we can't actually yeah, see there's nothing here that we can actually use to access its control panel with its terminal so what I'll do is I'll actually add just a terminal block here this is temporary this is well and truly temporary Let's just stick you there. What do we need for you? Computers and displays, construction components. can actually access this grab our gravity gen which is not built yet but we'll just do that we'll just invert the gravity field because it's upside down and that way when it is built the gravity will be correct we also we'll just rename these hmm I'm not sure which is which of that so I won't actually change that 
that one I do know, small cargo oxygen generation don't need to know it's small, we know it's small, so just cargo oxygen cargo? now let's see a container Yeah, that works better. So, yes, 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 that's all been inverted, yes. Okay, so when we build that up, that'll be all fine. All right, that said, I'm just going to scoot myself back up over here and dump these components back off into our container. Excellent. In fact, while I'm here, I'll just dump that in there as well. actually not the one we wanted. It's that we wanted, isn't it? Oh! Wow! Okay, that was impressive. Okay. Right, so yeah, that was impressive, but that's fine. Um, that's the other thing I was going to oh know. Um, yes. Just recharge ourselves here. That unfortunately is what the hell did I hit? That should not have actually brought up that s screen. I think I mis hit something. I haven't actually mis hit. There we go. Welcome back, display. Well, unfortunately, that's it for this particular stream. Um. I am afraid to say, welcome whoever it was that's just come in to, to view this. Unfortunately, I've just actually finished up and I'm just about to to quit. Um, so I do apologise for that. But you're welcome to drop back if you come back like an hour ago. That's when I normally start these streams. Uh, but hey, work within your time frame if, if you're welcome to drop back or not. Um, that said... Here we go. Everything's looking good there. Uh, yeah, that said, uh, happy engineering, everybody. Uh, thanks for dropping by. Feel free to check out the archived videos of this series uh, on YouTube. Link can be found below the video here. And other than that, yeah, happy engineering, and I shall talk to you another time. <laughs>